Hi guys, today we are making this traditional orange nian kau. A symbol of a higher, an increase in prosperity and good luck. Despite numerous varieties, my favorite will always be the West Java Indonesian nian kau, which they call China cake. There is so much different with my first nian kau recipe, which is use coconut milk and granulated sugar. This recipe is much simpler. It's made by mixing the glutinous rice flour, pure gula melaka, salt, and water. Then add in the minced orange peel to the mixture. By using pure gula melaka and orange peel, not only so much better in flavor, but it also has a lovely fragrance. The color of course much darker, and after so many hours of steaming, it will turn very dark, almost a similar sweet cake dodo. And a part of this basic nian kau recipe, I also include the recipe for pan fried nian kau and a steamed coconut nian kau, a great way to use leftover nian kau from Chinese New Year. So I hope you like it. Without further ado, let's get started. First off, we need to preparing the molds. Some people use grease proof paper or even food grade plastic for layering the molds. I personally love to use banana leaves simply because it's natural and healthier and also add more delightful fragrance to your nian kau. So, I just removed the center hard part of the banana leaves. Clean the leaves under running water. Blend the banana leaves in hot boiling water for about 5 minutes to soften it so it won't tear easily. Or alternatively, you can soften the banana leaves by heating it over a stove. Pat them dry. Using the molds as a guide, measure the length and width of the leaves. The width should be two times of the height of the molds, and the length should be enough to cover the circumference of the mold. Cut off the excess. Wrap the banana leaves around the mold, covering half of the outer rim. Secure the position of the leaf by putting a rubber band around the rim of the container. Then, insert the remaining part of the leaves into the mold. Please note that the banana leaves should cover the inner wall and at least half of the bottom part. And to help shape the inside part of the mold, insert a small round container into the mold and press the leaves against the base and the inner wall of the mold. Repeat the same process by adding two more leaves. Don't be confused if the leaves is too small. You can still use it by patch them to one another. And for the bottom part, cut two pieces of round shaped leaves with the diameter slightly bigger than the base. And then insert and press against the bottom to cover the base completely. All molds are done. Now we can start to make our nian kau butter. Place both gula melaka, salt and water in saucepan and bring to a gentle simmer or until the sugar melted. Make sure that you use pure gula melaka, it will be dark in color and pliable to touch. Once it's melted, remove from the heat, strain the mixture as sometimes there are some impurities in the sugar and let it cool completely. 
In the meantime, you can start prepare the steamer by bringing the water to a rolling boil. After the sugar mixture cooled down, gradually pour it into the glutinous rice flour. I highly recommend to use Thailand brand for best result. Stirring in between until the mixture is fully smooth. You can strain the mixture one more time like what I did to make sure there's no lump versus. And for the orange flavor, I'm using Japanese mint dried yuzu peel here. Or you can substitute it with Italian mixed peel, it also works well. Sprinkle about 1 tablespoon for each mold. Tap the mold for a few times. Cover each mold with aluminium foil to prevent the water condensation drops to our nian cow. And then we are ready to steam them. Place inside the steamer and steam on medium heat for 2 hours. You may need to refill the water throughout the cooking process. Don't let it dry out. Tada! After waiting for so long, finally we can enjoy our nian cow. Oh no, not yet! The nianko will still appear very soft at the end of cooking time, and that's very normal. We need to let the nianko cool down completely. Let it sit at room temperature in a plastic container or wrapper for at least 24 hours before unmolding. They will slightly firmer. Cut off the excess banana leaves to make it prettier. Leave about 1 to 2 cm from the edge of the nian cow. And at day 3, the nian cow will be much more firm. Or you can start them in the fridge so it will firm faster and easier to slice them. And because we don't use any preservatives, I highly recommend to keep them in the fridge after day 3 in a plastic or an airtight container or they can start to get moldy. They also can be kept for up to 6 months in the freezer. Look how soft and chewy this Nian Kao. Nian Kao is a popular gift when visiting family and friends during the Chinese New Year celebration. If you have planned to make this as a present, you can simply cover the top with a piece of acetate film with some Chinese New Year sticker on it. And before you stick them, make sure that you apply some vegetable oil onto the acetate film so it will be easier to remove later. So pretty, this is almost similar as the one sold in the store.
So how the best way to serve them? Well, you can eat the rice cake when it's steam. Just remember that it's very sticky and gooey when it's hot. I think the best way to enjoy this sweet rice cake is wait for it to cool. Like mine here, this is the third day of my nian cow. I just take them out from the fridge. And before you cut, always apply some vegetable oil into your knife or any kitchen tool to prevent stickiness. As you can see, they look a bit hard, but they cut nicely. Do not slice them to take. About one quarter inch thickness is good. And when ready to serve them, just reheat with steamer or microwave if you want to eat them plain. Or you can follow my pan fried or steamed coconut nyan cover recipe. It's really good. So for the pan fried nyan cow, in a medium bowl, combine the alfalfa's flour, baking powder, and salt. Then add in the eggs and mix until just combined. Gradually mix in the ice water. Don't add the ice water all at once. Start by adding 1 teaspoon at a time until you get the perfect consistency. Not too thick or too watery, like this. Only prepare the butter when you are ready to pan fry the nian cow. The butter shouldn't be sitting around for too long. It's good to go. So deep, so deep nian cow slices with the butter. On a medium heat, apply some margarine to the pan. If you use butter, I suggest to add some vegetable oil to avoid the butter burning. Pan fry the nian cow until golden brown on both sides. Press once in a while to check whether the inside cook well. Control the heat so the butter won't get burned while the nian cow on the inside isn't soft and chewy just yet. It smells really good. How about one big bite before continue to our last recipe? Mmm, so yummy. Look at the interior. How sticky those are. Light and everything butter coating the outside of the nian cow while soft chewy and stretchy and cow on the inside. And for the last recipe, also quite easy and so delightful, and it's perfect for a coconut lover. So you just need to steam the grated coconut for about 10 minutes, add in the salt, stir well, then steam the slices nian cow until soft, or you can microwave it, and simply fully coat the softened nian cow with grated coconut. How cool is that? They are both perfect to go with afternoon tea or a snack. I hope you enjoy this recipe as much as I do. It's time to celebrate the hard work, a time for families to reunite, feast, give thanks, and rejoice. Wishing you a happy and prosperous Chinese New Year's in advance. Hey, don't take my own bow. Ha <laughs> ha